Hey guys, welcome back to my channel if you've been here before, and if you haven't been here before, thanks for visiting. My name is Carolina, I live in New York City, and I make videos on sustainable designer fashion and other fashion and designer related things that I feel like talking about. So if that sounds interesting to you, please like this video down below and hit the big red button to subscribe to my channel because it really helps out my teeny tiny new YouTube channel and I'd appreciate it. Today we're going to be talking about all of the bags that have entered and been sold out of my closet. I have been buying and reselling bags for probably the last six years, mostly because if I have a bag and I notice that I'm really not using it, or maybe I just don't rock with it anymore, it's getting sold off, it's going on the chopping block so that someone else can appreciate that bag more, and then I'll use the money to buy something else that I will love for days to come. The first bag that I've sold in the past is the YSL Lou camera bag. I actually purchased this bag secondhand, but it was in brand new condition, so I basically just got a humongous discount on it. It was in a patent neon pink colorway, which was probably my first mistake. I was like, oh, it'll be so cool with a bright neon pink bag. It'll be so unique and extra. And I didn't think about the fact that I hate the color pink. I think I own one pink shirt. The Lou camera bag is what made me realize that I just don't like camera bags, at least not super thick ones. This bag sticks out from your body like a sore thumb. Is that the correct analogy? And the leather on that bag, not even just the patent, even the normal leather ones, it isn't very malleable. So a similar camera bag is the Gucci Soho Disco bag. That one's a little more flattering because it does kind of fall into itself and fall against your body. But the Lou camera bag is just like one hard brick that does not move around. I only had this bag for about two months because I very quickly realized I hated it and I probably wore it twice and sold it immediately after. The next YSL bag that I sold in the past was my wonderful YSL Kate in the black on black hardware and leather. There was nothing wrong with this bag. I absolutely loved it. If you're gonna buy your first designer bag, this is probably the best option out there, specifically in the black on black. I loved it. I wore it so many times. Great for casual, great for formal. I bought another black on black bag and I'm someone who likes to keep a very, very diverse collection. I don't like any of my bags looking the same, but that's why I had to get rid of this bag, even though I loved it so much. I will probably repurchase Kate again someday because like I said, it's probably one of the best bags out there. Next bag from YSL was the YSL Lulu in the size small in this dark green suede colorway with gold brass hardware. I bought this bag and then returned it immediately like two days later because I knew it wasn't for me. I kind of got sucked into social media influencing and everyone's obsession with the YSL Lulu. I was seeing it all the time on Instagram. I was seeing it all the time on YouTube and I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's a cute bag. When it arrived, I looked at it and I was like, whoa, this is really pretty. But I tried it on with a bunch of outfits. It wasn't really working. Maybe it's just not my style or not for my closet. Either way, I got rid of the bag, sent it back to Saks and never looked back. I wouldn't recommend also getting the suede version of this bag because because it just, it looked dirty all of the time. Like the bag was brand new, but because of suede and how it moves around, for some reason on the Lulu style, it's really noticeable when the suede is kind of pointed in different directions and I was not here for that. Next is the Celine Trapeze bag. This is a discontinued bag. It's an oldie, but a goodie. I bought it pre-loved for only about $500 and it was in really great condition. So I got an insane deal on it. I have always loved this bag, even from the Tumblr days when it was all over Tumblr and all over like, Wow, was Tumblr the social media for bags pre-Instagram? I think the thing that bothered me about it most was the tricolor aspect of it. There's this styling rule that I have no idea where I read it like 10 years ago, but it really locked itself into my brain. And that's not using more than three colors at a time. I think it's kind of a restrictive rule, but for some reason it really stuck with me. The Celine Trapeze is also just an awkwardly shaped bag. It's so pretty in theory, like it's nice to look at, but when you have the wings open and you're walking around a crowded area and you turn, you're hitting someone with your bag, guaranteed. Next bag was my Stella McCartney Falabella shoulder bag. I love the Falabella line from Stella McCartney because they are vegan bags, which, you know, that's always a nice thing. And they have just giant Cuban link chunky chains all around the edges. I am a chunky chain link bag kind of girl. The only problem was that I think I just got the wrong style of bag. The version that I had, oh, one, first of all, it was the most beautiful beige I've ever seen in my life. There's a little sparkle to the Stella McCartney bag, so that just made it go from like a very neutral beige to a little more glitzy and glamorous. But my version wasn't the super popular Falabella tote version. It was just a shoulder bag with a flap, almost like a mini messenger bag. Messenger bags are kind of hard to style. I think I would probably rebuy this bag in the same exact color in a similar size, just in a tote version where 
you know, you have a flap and it kind of, I don't know how to explain it. I'll post a photo of it so you can see what it looks like, but I would definitely repurchase this bag just in this style. Next is my vintage Bottega Veneta hobo bag. I had one of the vintage versions of this style in a beautiful lipstick red. Oh, it was the most striking color ever. I loved it, but I ended up buying the new version of this bag, which is the Jody bag. And again, I like having a diverse collection. I did not need two bags in this style. So off the red one went. I do miss this bag from time to time just because it was a nice style and the color was so striking. Bottega does color so well. They're like the Bob Ross of bags and colors, honestly. Next up is my Versace Palazzo clutch with chain. Love this bag. It was sick. I'm a sucker for black on black hardware. It had a beautiful gold chain and black and gold is just so classic Versace. The problem with this bag was that the chain hurt and it wasn't even that thin of a chain, but it just, I don't know, the bag was pretty heavy because the leather was very hefty and you had that giant Medusa head. So when I would wear it, it would like dig into my shoulder if I had anything more than three credit cards in there. Next is the Bottega Veneta mini twist bag. I purchased this bag and then sent it back like two days later. So I actually didn't even own it. I returned it right away because this bag opened from the bottom of the bag. It just, that's ridiculous. I think that's all I need to say about this. I have a whole video on it because what were they thinking? It kind of feels like chaotic evil from Bottega, honestly. Maybe they just wanted to have everyone's things fall out of their bag every time they open the bag. And the last bag was my Prada Bauletto Buller bag in this beautiful leather taupe slash gray color. This bag was actually the first luxury designer bag that I ever purchased for myself. I got it about a month after graduating from college. I love this bag and it definitely got a lot of use. It looked small, but it was actually still pretty big and could fit gym clothes and gym shoes so I could go to the gym after work. But what really annoyed me about it was that it just it was kind of big and it didn't have a shoulder strap so you could only top handle it and it wasn't big enough to go over the shoulders and this bag was a really good first lesson in figuring out what bags work for me personally. I was having to force myself to reach for it at a certain point so I just kicked it out of my closet. And again, that's why it's so important to learn about what you like and what you don't like in different bags before you spend a ton of money on that. All right guys, that's it for today's video. Are there any bags that you guys have sold in the past and either really regretted or really been happy to see them go? I'd love to hear in the comments section down below. And as usual, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.